Chapter 3 of Who Was Ben Franklin? Chapter 3, Runaway. Ben left home and went to work in his brother's shop. James taught him to set type. Ben was a fast learner and was soon printing booklets and songs. As the master, James had to pay for his apprentice's food and lodging. Ben moved in with the family. James's other apprentices lived there too. James paid the family to provide Ben with meals and a bed. Ben thought of a way to raise some cash. He proposed a deal. James should stop paying the family to feed Ben. Instead, James should give Ben the meal money. Ben would feed himself on just half the money James had been paying the family for his meals. Ben asked only one thing. Any meal money he didn't spend, he could keep. James agreed to that deal. The young apprentice found a book on cooking with vegetables. He stopped eating meat. He lived on rice, boiled potatoes, and cornmeal mush called hasty pudding. To his brother's surprise, Ben was able to save part of his meal money. He spent it on books. Ben liked to read poetry. He decided to write a few poems of his own. In November 1718, the pirate known as Blackbeard was killed. Ben wrote a poem about it that began. Will you hear of a bloody battle lately fought upon the seas? It will make your ears rattle and your admiration cease. So there's our pictures. James printed Ben's poems. He sent Ben out into the streets to sell them. Ben's poem about drowning became very popular. It was called The Lighthouse Tragedy. Soon, the people of Boston were talking about the 12-year-old poet. Another of Ben's jobs was to help print the Boston Gazette. It was one of America's first newspapers. Then, in 1721, James began his own paper, the New England Courant. Ben printed the oh, Courant and delivered copies to customers. Ben enjoyed the work, but his brother was a harsh master. James wanted to show his other apprentices that he did not favor Ben. When Ben made mistakes, James beat him. Ben would then talk back. James would only beat him some more. Around April Fool's Day of 1722, Ben decided to play a trick on his brother. He began writing funny articles about life in Boston. He didn't sign them with his own name. Instead, he made up a woman's name, Silence Do Good. Late at night, Ben slipped the articles under the door of the print shop. James found them. He liked Silence Do Good's articles so much that he printed them in the Corian. They appeared for half a year. People in Boston wondered, who was Silence Do Good? Ben even heard James talking about silence with his friends. Finally, in the fall of 1722, Ben revealed the truth. He was Silence Do Good. Most readers laughed, but James was angry at being fooled. Meanwhile, James Franklin was in trouble. He criticized the English officials who ran Massachusetts. His writings in the Coriant landed him in jail for a month. That didn't stop James. In early 1723, an order was issued. James Franklin could no longer print the New England Coriant. James thought of a way to get around the order. He would list his 17-year-old brother, Ben, as the Coriant's publisher. But secretly, James would still tell Ben what to do. What if James was asked how an apprentice could run the paper? He had an answer for that, too. James drew up papers saying that Ben had finished his apprenticeship and was now on his own. But James also made secret papers. These said that Ben must be his apprentice for four more years. The scheme worked for a while. The problem was Ben wanted to really be publisher. He felt that he could run the paper and he didn't like serving as his brother's puppet. The two of them fought more than ever. James's way to settle things was to beat Ben. There came a day when James hit him once too often. Ben decided to run away. A runaway apprentice could be punished if he was caught, but, his, but Ben figured his brother wouldn't come after him. If James tried to catch him, Ben might reveal the scheme of, for running the newspaper. James could end up in jail again. 
a friend of Ben's helped him stow away on a ship. In the fall of 1723, Ben boarded the ship with just a few coins in his pocket. Three days later, he was in New York City, 200 miles from home. Chapter 4, Benjamin Franklin, sorry, Benjamin Franklin, printer. As Ben had expected, James did not try to track him down. Ben couldn't find printing work in New York either. He went on to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The runaway apprentice made half the trip by boat. He walked the other 50 miles. Ben arrived in Pennsylvania tired and dirty. His extra shirts and stockings were bulging out of his pockets. He was hungry, so he brought three penny rolls at a bakery. Ben stuck two of the rolls under his arms. He stuffed a third in his mouth. As Ben walked away, a girl named Deborah Reed saw him from her doorway. She burst out laughing at the sight. Ben rented a room from Debbie's family. He found a job with a printer. Ben did so well that he was soon running the business. The governor of Pennsylvania saw Ben's printing work. He was impressed. The governor offered to help set Ben up in business. If Ben would visit England by, to buy printing supplies, the governor promised he would pay the bills. The 18-year-old printer was thrilled by the offer. He sailed in late 1724 and reached London on Christmas Eve. But the governor had been all talk. He never sent the money. Ben was stranded in England, 3,000 miles from home. But Ben made the best of things. He found work at a London printing house. During his year and a half in England, he learned more about printing. He also met famous scientists and authors. In 1725, at the age of only 19, he wrote and printed a book about religion. For fun, he swam in the Thames River. Once he swam more than three miles on a bet. As crowds watched him swim, Ben had an idea. He would stay in England to run a swimming school. Fortunately for America, he changed his mind. In the fall of 1726, Ben returned to Philadelphia. For a while, he worked for a printer. Then, in 1728, he went into, printing, into the printing business for himself. The next year, he began to publish his own newspaper. It was called the Pennsylvania Gazette. Ben was its editor, printer, and star reporter. He drew one of the first cartoons to appear, appear in an American newspaper. His paper was also one of the first to print a map with an article. Besides news, his paper offered jokes and riddles. When there was little to report, Ben invited, invented news items. For example, he ran a story about a man who happened to be in a canoe with his wife and his fiddle. The canoe overturned. The wife could not swim, but the man, Franklin reported, saved his fiddle and let his wife go to the bottom. If there were not enough letters to the editor, Franklin made up letters. He signed them with fake names. He also spiced up his paper with advice in the lovelorn. His own love life was bumpy. During the time he had lived with the Reeds, Ben had fallen in love with Debbie. She was the girl who thought he looked so funny when he first came to Philadelphia. After Ben returned from England, he and Debbie wanted to marry, but they each had a problem. Ben had a child with another woman. Who was she? To this day, we do not know. The baby was born in 1730 or 1731 and was named William Franklin. Ben arranged to raise the boy. Debbie had married another man while Ben was away. The man left Debbie. It was believed that he died in a barroom fight. This was not known for sure, however. Under the law, if her husband was alive, Debbie must not remarry. If she did, she would be jailed. Debbie and Ben found a solution. On September 1st, 1730, they had a common law wedding. This meant that they would live as husband and wife without a legal ceremony. Debbie would also treat William as her son. Benjamin and Deborah Franklin later had two children together. Francis Franklin, called Frankie, was born in 1732. He died of smallpox when he was only four. Sarah, known as Sally, was born in 1743. Like many other colonial families, the Franklins lived and worked in their house. 
Deborah worked alongside Pappy, as she called Ben. She sewed bindings to the, brick, the books he printed. With Debbie's help, Ben became the largest bookseller in the colonies. The Pennsylvania Gazette became the leading newspaper. In those times, almanacs were very popular. These booklets gave weather forecasts and other information for the coming year. Ben printed almanacs written by other people. Then, in 1732, he decided to create his own almanac. He pretended that the author was named Richard Saunders. Richard was supposed to be a poor but lovable man. Poor Richard's Almanac was first issued in 1733. Franklin continued it every year until 1758. Poor Richard's Almanac became the most popular almanac in America. It sold 10,000 copies a year. There were two reasons for its success. First, each year, poor Richard told a little about his life, reading it like following a soap opera today. Poor Richard's sayings were the other big attraction. The first almanac introduced sayings, great talkers, little doers. Sayings for 1750 included, uh, little strokes fell great oaks. In, in 1753, poor Richard warned, haste makes waste. Many of poor Richard's sayings are still popular today. Actually, Poor Richard, or rather Ben Franklin, did not make up most of the sayings. Often, he just improved old sayings. For example, there was a saying, Help thyself and God will help thee. Ben changed it to God helps them that help themselves. People began to quote Poor Richard's sayings. A child given a penny might be told, A penny saved is a penny earned. At bedtime, children were reminded, Early to bed and early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. Poor Richard made Ben wealthy. In fact, he was rich enough to stop working as a printer. In 1748, he placed his printing business in the hands of a partner. He didn't retire, though. Ben was just 42 years old. There was so much he hoped to do. He felt like he was just starting out in life.